Hi everybody. Today we discuss the metabolism of chylomicrons. Chylomicron metabolism. So this chylomicron, as we know, is formed from the intestine. It is formed from the intestine. And what will, what is its function? It carries the triglycerols, the dietary triglycerols. It carries. So we have to remember two things. It is carried from intestine. It is synthesized in intestine, and it carries the dietary triglycerols. Now, in last video, we have learned that HDL gives apo C and apo E. That is HDL donates apo C and apo E for in the metabolism of chylomicron and BLDL. So this is the third point that we have to remember. First is that it is synthesized in intestine. Second is that it transports the dietary triglycerols. And third, HDL is the donor of apo C and apo E that is required for the metabolism of chylomicrons. So if these three things are clear, we can continue with the metabolism of chylomicron. Now, as we have discussed, we require an intestine to synthesize chylomicron. So this intestine or the small intestine, it will synthesize chylomicron that is the nascent particle which contains a triglyceride and cholesterol and now why I call it as nascent chylomicron because it has APO A and it has a B48 APO B48 so it has all the, it has APO A it is APO B48 but it is not a proper chylomicron so it is called as a nascent chylomicron it is in the initial stages of its formation so this intestine formed the ka nascent chylomicron which is having APO B48 APO A and it has triglycerols and cholesterol now this is going to now this is going to form take APO C and APO E APO C APO E from the HDL so HDL because we have discussed that HDL will give aposi and apoi. So what will HDL have? It will have phospholipids, it will have cholesterol and it has aposi, it has apoi and the rest it has apo A and it will have apo E, apo C, apo A it will have. So this uh, this is HDL. So aposi, apoi that is what we are requiring in this metabolism. The aposi, apoi will be transported by the HDL to the chylomicron, nascent chylomicron and what we will get is triglycerides and cholesterol we have APO B48 now we have already A, APO A and then we have APO C and we get APO E also so now we have formed the full chylomicron so this full chylomicron has been formed so full chylomicron has been formed and the intestine which forms nascent chylomicron with APO A, APO B48 it has, uh, it takes APO C and APO E from HDL forms chylomicron so the full chylomicron or uh, has, it has APO B48, APO A, APO E and APO C ok, if this much is clear I will redraw the diagram again and in short we will revise also so we have intestine which gives us nascent chylomicron which has triglycerol, cholesterol, B48 and APO A. This will be getting APO C, APO E from HDL which has phospholipids and cholesterol. It has APO A, it has APO C, it has APO E. This forms a triglycerol with, uh, with cholesterol APO B48 APO A APO C and APO E So this was intestine This is mostly important for PG students who are pursuing MD Biochemistry and to make concepts clear for UG students also So this is nascent chylomicron 
and this is chylomicron this is hdl now from where does the hdl come so now the liver comes into the picture so hdl is coming from the liver we have discussed in last video that the hdl is synthesized from the liver so hdl is coming from the liver now this chylomicron is it has now it it has cholesterol it has triglyceride now what will happen when it passes through the tissues the tissues contain lipoprotein lipase lipoprotein lipase so what will happen the triacylglycerol will be acted upon by lipoprotein lipase and it will break down into fatty acids so the fatty acids go into the tissues the remaining is the glycerol so the glycerol is present the remaining is the glycerol the fatty acids enter the tissues the triglycerol forms fatty acids and uh, glycerol in the presence of lipoprotein lipase so what else is remaining the uh, the apo c and apo e will again be given back to the hdl up sorry down it gives back apo a and apo c okay so it gives back the apo it takes the apo c apo e and but gives back the apo a and apo c now what will it have and what will it is remaining with it contains triglycerides some some amount of triglycerol will be present some amount of cholesterol is always present it contains b48 and which apo protein is left with it contains b48 and e okay it contains b48 and e so this is called as chylomicron remnant So the point to be noted is the apo C and apo E were transported from HDL, but when it had to return back, it gave apo A and apo C back to HDL. Therefore, the chylomicron remnant has apo E and apo B forty eight. So this chylomicron remnant can now enter the liver. Now it can enter the liver in two ways because the liver has two receptors. It has two receptors. one is ldl receptor ldl receptor this is ldl receptor and this is ldl receptor protein so one is ldl receptor one is ldl receptor protein so this chylomicron remnant can enter through both and there is one enzyme which is present over here as there was lipoprotein lipase in the tissue there is hepatic lipase so there is hepatic lipase over here so uh, this chylomicron remnant when it enters to both the receptors what will it form it will form free fatty acids and it will give back the cholesterol to the liver to the ldl receptor protein so in short this is the metabolism of chylomicron if we go through it again the in this time which synthesizes the nascent chylomicron it has apo a and b48 so triglycerides and cholesterol so nascent chylomicron has b48 and a and this to form full chylomicron it requires apo c apo e which is given by hdl which is synthesized from liver now when it comes near the tissues it uh, acted upon by lipoprotein lipase and this chylomicron which has triacyl glycerol is present in breaks down into fatty acids and glycerol gives back the apo c apo a to hdl so it is remaining with triglycerols cholesterol apo b48 and apo e some amount of triglycerols are still present so this remaining all the chylomicron remnant enters the liver through ldl receptor of ldl receptor like protein and it when it enters the liver there is again an enzyme called as hepatic lipase so the amount of triglycerol which was present is broken down into free fatty acids and cholesterol is given to the liver so this is the whole mechanism of transport or, or the metabolism of chylomicron this is easier as compared to the reverse cholesterol transport the thing only that we did reverse cholesterol transport in the first video was so as to know that hdl contains apo c and apo e and this was being he helping us to donate apo c apo e into the chylomicrons so this is the chylomicron metabolism
and now i need to discuss the hypolipoproteinemias especially the hypo alpha proteinemias if you remember in the electrophoretic videos electrophoretic video i had discussed that the alpha lipoprotein is hdl hdl see the metabolism or in this video the metabolism of chylomicron is especially for the pg students okay the metabolism of chylomicrons is especially for the pg students because they can be asked and for the ug student it is conceptual but the mcq that is mostly asked is about the apoproteins and the diseases so today we'll discuss hypolipoproteinemia okay so these are the mcq so now we discuss the mcq part of this the alpha lipoprotein is called as the hdl so hypolipoproteinemia hypolipoproteinemia so this means there is decrease of the lipoproteins and if i say there is hypo alpha lipoproteinemia the alpha is hdl this means there is decrease in the hdl so this is one mcq that is hypo alpha lipoproteinemia that is there is decrease in hdl and hypo lipoproteinemia means there is decrease in the lipoproteins now which are the conditions of hypo lipoproteinemia now hypo lipoproteinemia there can be a hypo beta proteinemia or it is better called as a beta lipoproteinemia sorry a beta lipoproteinemia and see the hypo conditions we are discussing and hypo alpha alpha proteinemia okay hypo alpha lipoproteinemia so because it is a beta okay this means the beta lipoprotein is not there which is beta lipoprotein that is beta lipoprotein is ldl so ldl lipoprotein is decreased a hypo alpha means hdl this means hdl lipoprotein is decreased now hypo uh, a beta lipoproteinemia or the decrease in the ldl is seen is seen in which of diseases it is seen with retinitis pigmentosa retinitis pigmentosa and it is seen with acanthosis acanthosis spinocerebellar ataxia spino cerebellar ataxia and malabsorption so the mnemonic is rasam it is a south indian dish that it is very tasty so the mnemonic is rasam r for retinitis pigmentosa a for acanthocytosis s for spino cerebellar ataxia and m for malabsorption so a beta lipoproteinemia or decrease ldl is seen associated with these conditions this could be your mcq retinitis pigmentosa acanthocyte acanthocytosis spelling mistake sorry spino cerebellar ataxia and malabsorption rasam now we see the hypo alpha lipoproteinemia hypo alpha lipoproteinemia means there is hdl deficiency now hdl deficiency this can be in two diseases that is tangiers disease or it could be due to the deficiency of lcat okay now coming to tangiers disease in the last video you have seen that there was metabolism of hdl and where we had one protein atp binding atp binding cassette transporter protein abca1 what was the function of abca1 it was the function that it would transport the cholesterol from the tissue to the apo a1 so that it could form pre beta hdl okay but now there is no uh, there is no aba this was the function okay the cholesterol was transported via the atp binding cassette transporter protein so aba c1 is not there or it is deficient so the cholesterol will not be transported pre beta hdl will be not formed so hdl synthesis will be hampered so this is the tangiers disease and this tangiers disease has one more feature that it has orange 
tonsils okay so these are the two important points of the tangential disease that there is decrease hdl because there is uh, lack of abca1 and there is orange tonsils now coming to deficiency of lcat deficiency of lcat means lesser than cholesterol acyl transferases this enzyme was important it was binding it was uh, present in the uh, hdl nascent hdl and it was forming cholesterol esters from cholesterol so if there is deficiency it could be complete deficiency or it could be partial deficiency okay so with the partial deficiency is called as the fish eye disease fish eye disease so the two important uh, conditions that you have to remember is there is decrease hdl is first is the tangential disease second is the fish eye disease and there is complete deficiency of lcat that's all for this video Thank you so much.